Welcome to One Cup on Tea. How are you when it comes to fear? Are you someone and you can just put fear behind you and move on? Are you someone that when it comes to fear it cripples you and holds you back? Or are you someone that even though you are fearful you still move forward? Maybe you're one of all of those things. Over this last week I was at an event where there was over 600 people attending the event. I was invited along and... Whilst I was there, the guest speaker went and spoke eloquently about Jesus being asleep in the boat and the disciples being caught up in fear for their very lives because of the storm that was around about them. And so they woke Jesus up and said, don't you care about us? Maybe that's how you feel right now. There's a storm around you and you were there going and you're wondering, does Jesus even care? But that's not what I'm going to speak on. The guest speaker before they spoke went and had said to me that they were apprehensive, that they were shaking like a leaf. And why wouldn't they? They were standing up in front of 600 people. A daunting task. But when they spoke, there was no sign of any fear or nervousness. And as I said, the dress was excellent. Very often in scripture we hear those words though that are in that passage. Do not be afraid. Or why are you afraid? But do not be afraid is a phrase that comes up in scripture over and over and over again. And the very fact that that phrase is used goes to show that people were afraid. They were fearful. One example is when the angel turned up to Mary and said, Do not be afraid. There was much to be fearful of. Single lady, only engaged, not married. Suddenly pregnant, outside of wedlock. A serious offence in her time. Joshua, before he was going and leading the people into the promised land, the commander of the army of the Lord turns up and says to him, Do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord is with you. But you see, in all of these situations, what there is is an acknowledgement that the person is fearful. And there's nothing wrong with that. But during the week, I went and read this beautiful little verse in Ezra chapter 3 and verse 3. And there's three... The first three words of that verse, I think, are powerful. And I want to explore that with you today, in light of the questions I just asked at the beginning. So I'll read it to you. It goes and says, despite their fear, that's the people, despite their fear of the people around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord. Both the morning and evening sacrifice. Despite their fear of the people around them. Now here's a group of exiles. Coming back from Babylon to Jerusalem. After 70 years as the prophet Jeremiah had said. And their intent was after reading the book of the law of Moses. That they were going to go and build the altar and the temple for the Lord. They were going along to build the altar. Now remember, Jerusalem is completely in ruins. It's only a pile of rubble. And these guys, they turn up and they're going to build the altar here in the middle of Jerusalem. And they are surrounded by people who laughed at them, made fun of them, ended up hindered them, got to the point that they were even violent with them. Even got to the point where they weren't and stopped the rebuilding project altogether. And yet, here we go, despite their fear of the people around them, they went and built this altar. You see, even though they came back into their homeland, 
because they had been missing for 70 years. Some of them may have not even been that old. And so they had never been in Jerusalem before. And here they are, and they are rebuilding an altar out in public because it's all rubble. There's nowhere to hide here. And they're having to build this altar to the Lord. And they're doing it out of conviction of what they believe, but at the same time in complete fear of the people around about them. And I like that because it recognizes that they are actually scared out of their wits about this. And so even though this is home, they're the ones who are essentially the strangers now who are here. They're going and into this pile of rubble and they're starting to build this altar up to the Lord so that he can be worshipped from Jerusalem again. And as I said, they faced opposition even to the point where they were being, their very lives were being threatened. And yet it says despite their fear of the people that built the altar. So I love that. That means that even though they were fearful, they knew they were fearful, it's even recorded they were fearful, they still stepped into what they believed that God wanted them to do. Now here's a question I want to ask you. Does fear hold you back from doing the things you believe you ought to do? Surveys apparently have been taken of people in the winter years of their lives, asking them what would they change if they were to look back. And the key thing that many people go and say is that they would take more risks. They would have done more crazy things than they did. But fear had held them back. And so they would encourage you to step out and overcome your fear. This isn't an overcoming of fear. This is actually a working with their fear, through their fear. Despite their fear. Their fear was always there. Despite their fear, they did it. Maybe today, you need to step out into something that you are convicted and convinced that God wants you to do. But you won't do it because you're afraid of family. Proverbs goes and says that the fear of man proves to be a snare. You're afraid of what family might say. You're afraid of what your friends might say. You're afraid of what people around about you might say. You're afraid to go and take a stand and go and say, no, I'm not getting into that. That's not for me because the fear is you may lose friends over it. Maybe you're afraid to go and do something because you know that you are going to be made a laugh of. You know that people are going to say, ha, there's that religious nut. Well, here's the question. Are you someone and you can, once you're told, do not be afraid. It's just, okay, I'm not afraid. No issue at all. Are you someone and you're crippled by fear? Fear holds you back. Stops you from being able to move forward. Or are you someone, and this is the word you need to hear, despite your fear, even though you know you're afraid, step into it. Just step out to what it is that you're to do. Trust God in it all. Let him overrule. Let him lead. Let him guide. Look at the whole of the Bible. It is full of stories who, of people who stepped out into the unknown, the fear of the unknown. Just trusting God and his word. What is it that God is saying to you? Maybe what he's saying to you today is, do not be afraid. But you recognize you have that fear. And just like Zerubbabel and his friends that were with him, you need to move forward despite your fear. Here they were in that public space. And when they'd finished building the altar, it goes and says that they went and had morning and evening sacrifices. But here's the thing. That very act of worship was taking place out in the open. In the midst of all those who had tried to stop them. In the midst of all those people who had tried to go and make a laugh of them. Who even physically threatened them. Here they were suddenly and they are worshipping God. And you know what it says? It says that there were people there and they laughed and they wept. 
those who were laughing because they'd achieved it, and there were those who had remembered the temple in its former days, and it says, and they wept. But the noise was so much, the celebration was so much, didn't know whether people were laughing or weeping. But all of that happened. That joy was being expressed. Why? Because a small group of people, despite their fear, stepped into what they believed God wanted them to do. What impact can you make on our society if you were to step into whatever it is that God has called you to do despite your fear? Think about that. I'll tell you why. Because I'm thinking about that in regard to my life. If we all did it, ooh, what an impact we would make on our world today.